All right, friends, here we go. Welcome, welcome to Tidy Up Tuesday. It is Tuesday. It came out of nowhere, and it's time to tidy up. Welcome, welcome. Linda's here. Judy, Shirley, Ohio, Kansas, Tennessee. I love it. Chantal's from here from up north in Canada. Susan from Texas. Connie from South Carolina. Boy, we are coast to coast. I love it. Ruth's here from Houston. Sue's here from Ohio. And Sherry's here. Woohoo! Welcome, friends. So uh, I had um, a really fun conversation yesterday with um, Anna Marie. She stopped by to pick up some product. And we had this conversation about my favorite things. And she said, you know, Lauren... I would just love to know what are, but out of your favorites, what are your most favorite things? And, you know, you've, I said, well, I've got the Amazon, I've got all my favorites there. No, but out of your favorites, I want to know your favorites right now, May 2023. What are your favorite things? What do you love to you? So like if I had the short list, what would be on it? <laughs> And so, Anna Marie, this is um, just for you. I am going to give you a quick list. We'll see how quick it is. <laughs> my top 10 favorites that I use to keep myself organized over and over and over here in my craft room. And uh, if you can look around, I, I need to get back into putting things away and putting my systems away. But I did want to kind of just in one place, in one video, capture the things that I turn to over and over and over again that help me put things away so that I can focus on the things I like to do, which is create, right? So I have my top 10 list for you. I've got, I've got my printout to go over with you. I have all of these products linked one through 10 in the descriptions for you. How about that? I even did that for you. So if you, if there's one thing that kind of strikes your fancy today, you can just look in the description, um, either below the video on YouTube, hit the show more button or above the video on Facebook. So that way you have all the things right where you need it. So it's like, well, Lauren, where are those little tabs that you stick on the side of the Power Project folder? Okay, it's linked. It's it's all there for you. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha covered. So, um, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Amy, Jean, Martha, Brenda, Beverly, Diane, Allie, Carrie, Karen. Woohoo! Thanks, everybody, for saying hello. Hello, hello. And um, so that's what we're going to jump into today. We are going to go over my top 10 favorites. And in case you need to find me um, all the different places, <laughs> you can find me, um, you know, Creative Memories. I love my Creative Memories products. So I've got those for you. I'm here on Facebook and YouTube. I'm also on Instagram. And if you do want to see the big picture of all the things that I love in my craft room, I do have my Amazon store, which has just links of the things that I buy. And a lot of those, like I'll click in and, it's, and you know, to get you the link and it's like purchased five times. Yeah, that's, that's one of those things. <laughs> that's one of those things that I use over and over again, because it works for me. I love it. I have the right container to put the thing in and it's all there for me. Okay, so are you guys ready to jump in? Woo, let's get going. Okay, so we're gonna start off with 10. Now, it was really hard to kind of categorize these into, you know, what's my absolute favorite? And I tried a little bit, but you know, take it take it as you will. You know, some of these are just, they're, they're all 10 are like the things that I use over and over again. Okay, so first off, I also just want to mention, sometimes I talk about a specific thing, but then also sometimes I couldn't, I couldn't talk about one thing without talking about like the supporting characters <laughs> for those, that thing. So sometimes it's kind of like by 
uh, the way I organize and I'll have a few products, but it's a general category. Sometimes it's by category, but sometimes it's by product. Okay. So here we go. Number 10. Woo! Binders. Okay. If you know me, you know, I love my binders. All right. So what does that look like? Well, one of my favorite things you can see right here, right here, binders. And I even did a reorganization. Actually, I'm going to have to move this guy out of the way just for a sec. We're going to come back to that. But one of the things I did in my reorganization is I moved these binders closer to me so that everything's right within reach. So out of these binders, these are the sort and stash binders from Creative Memories. Those are linked if you want to know what, what are they. And out of these, as you know, I love the different ways to organize. And I have in more detail, I have uh, videos that go over all these different things, right? This is my laser title binder. So I have a video on how I went into the details on how to organize this. So the sort and stash, I use this for titles, right? So I use the four by four pocket sleeves for the titles. And um, I also have, I think in the back here, where did I put them right here? I also use some of the four by six um, scrapbook sleeves, the like the slip in scrapbook sleeves. Okay, so it's the sort and stash binder, but it's also the, the sleeves that go into it. And then if you remember, we also talked about the sticker. So I love that it's just right here and it fits perfectly in the Simply Tidy tubes. These <laughs> tubes, cubes, these are the 16 by 16 cubes from Michaels. So these binders fit perfectly in there. Um, so as, as well as those, I have my sticker titles, which we have talked in depth about this as well which has all my sticker titles in here. Again, super easy to reach and grab these. And um, so in the video that's like, let's tidy our titles, this is where we went into more detail about this. Included in here also are some of those, um, I have my vellum in here too, which are in those four by six pockets you can see over here. But then um, there's also fill and file sleeves that we've talked about. Um, oh, and then this is the sticker paper and still working on that one, folks. <laughs> sticker backing paper. I haven't, I haven't really found one that I can say, yeah, that's a, that's a, the perfect addition. And the one that I had, um, they haven't restocked. Okay. Um, but we, you know, just watch the video on that if you want to know more. Then there's also the fill and file sleeves from Creative Memories that were meant for these binders. So one of my favorite uses for those are for my ABCs. So I use, they have different formats for the fill and file sleeves. So I use those for my ABC stickers. Um, you can see kind of in here, I use the big pockets, the six by 12s, all the different sizes. And then of course, so I have actually three binders of ABCs, believe it or not, because I have all those. I have all those. And then I also use a binder just for my templates. So you can see I use the big 12 by 12 fill and file sleeve, and then I keep my um, templates in here. I don't use a whole lot of templates, so I don't have a, a huge stash of them, but I do love being able to kind of flip through. So I have a, another binder over here that's just templates. And so I can, I can use this one, this one's labeled templates. Um, just for keeping those uh, larger templates in order. And I have other stuff in here too, right? Like we have some of the old vintage CM stuff in here as well as my templates. Okay, so those are my favorite binders, number 10 on the list. Okay, I'm gonna move right along. And um, if you have any questions, please pop them up in the chat so I can, um, you know, answer anything. So that's number 10, binders for titles, stickers, and templates. Let's go to number nine. 
And number nine, um, I have it listed as totally Tiffany paper handlers, but really this category is vertical paper storage boxes. And I have talked a lot about how much I love vertical storage. So vertical storage, you can find all over different places in my craft room, but these are the totally Tiffany paper handler boxes. Love them. They have some linked on Amazon. I gave a link to you, but I think the best price for you would be if you go to Totally Tiffany's website and sometimes she runs sales and you can get like, you know, a bundle of five of them or whatever. I love these because they have a handle. So some, some of the things I have in my craft room um, organized in this are heavy. And so I love that I can pull up the handles and just grab them and, and bring it to wherever I need. Um, and then they just pop right back down and they go, um, you can slide them in. These work in the um, older uh, recollections cubes. They work in the Simply Tidy cubes. I haven't, actually I haven't seen, do they work in the Calyx units? Let me see. Um, yeah, they'll work. They barely, barely fit in the Ikea Calyx units too. This one wouldn't with the uh, paper sticking up, but just the paper holder itself will work in the Calyx units. Okay, so what do I keep in these? Just about everything. So as you as you mentioned, as I mentioned, I love vertical storage. So this one actually is holding my Papa Bear sleeve. So I have Papa Bear, Mama Bear, Baby Bear. I'll talk more about those. Um, I also have the fill and file sleeves and another one, which I just talked about too. So I have all my different size fill and files in here. And what else do I have? I have, um, oh, I, I, I put photo paper in there. I put, um, let me see, the uh, 12 by 12 sleeves. I, and then I have a bunch of those over on that side. And then over here, one of my favorite is using them. Now this is a different brand but it's very similar and I had a hard time finding these. So that's why I went to the totally Tiffany. Um, but this I use to keep all the different size pages in my craft room. So like these are the old size premier pages. So I wanted to separate those out. So I have um, the premier, the premier pocket, side loading, and this one is a multi-pocket, you know, I have a multi-pocket, multi, oh, that's multi-sleeves. I have pocket pages, multi-pocket. Here we go. This is an easier one to pick up. Multi-pocket. So I just have all these in the slots from the Recollections cubes, and they hold all the different size pages for me. And it keeps them vertical, for one, but it also keeps them kind of contained in a little space so that I can just grab that out if I need to and it makes it really easy. Okay, um, Jackie says she would love to know how I store organize all the sizes of peekaboo pockets and mat packs if not kept with collections. Okay, great question. That's not on my top 10, but I'll, t I'll talk about that. So the, um, the peekaboo, well actually one of them is peekaboo pockets um, my favorite way of storing those is in the five by seven cases. And we're going to talk about these in a, a little bit, but I keep my small peekaboo pockets and then my larger peekaboo pockets in here. And I love the five by seven cases. This is on my list, but the six by 12 um, peekaboo pockets, actually, I don't know if you can see the six by 12 are kept in this drawer right here because they're too big to fit on my cart. And so um, I have to have a bigger drawer. These are 12 by 12 drawers. You can get that at Michael's. Um, so I keep it handy. You can see how fast I can turn around and grab one of those. So those are there. Map packs I typically keep with my collections. And we'll go into, I'll show you where I keep those. Okay. 
Hello, Cindy. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Gloria. I'm so glad you're here. So glad to have you. Um, and how do I get my white backing so perfect for each slot in the binders? Linda's asking. Hmm. The white backing in my binders. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure. In here? I'm not sure. Linda, tell me more about that. <laughs> okay. Um, how you keep... I'm, I'm getting to ephemera, Gloria. So, yes. Okay. Let me keep going and then um, remind me like if I need to go into more detail. So the Totally Tiffany paper handlers, those I love. I Like I said, I use them for all kinds of things. Vertical storage that I want to keep, you know, they'll work in big cubbies like this. They'll work in the cubbies that have the slots. And I just use these guys for all kinds of things. And you've got to have your label maker so that you know what's in all the things, right? It just really helps. Let me see what else I have in there. Oh, you could put magazines. Oh, I put Cricut vinyl in there. I mean, all kinds of things will fit in those vertical storage. Love those. Okay. Um, the next thing, number eight. Ta-da! Photo organization. Yes, let's talk about this. Um, <clears throat> again, this is also something that I have talked about. <laughs> Here. So again, this is kind of that, ooh, let's put it all in one place video. So my favorite photo organization is the power sort box. Okay, my all my photos are in here. This is really heavy. My my photo sort box. This is from Creative Memories, the photo sort box and photo folders. So um, if you saw a few of the posts I was doing, I took all of 2003, this is the year I went back, I'm, I'm working through currently as one of my backlog years and I have all my photos. These were when we had printed photos in the days of printed photos. So for printed photos, um, digital, we'll get into a whole nother topic, a whole nother time. Um, I love, the power sort box, but even more, the photo folders. And you guys know these are one of my brainchild. <laughs> this is one of my brainchild. Um, and so you can find these in the shop in my cra uh, Scrap Some Joy shop. You get them in packs of 50. And again, you can reuse them. Just use pencil when you're writing on them. And <clears throat> it just gives you a place to write and put all the things once you touch your photos. The whole point, you know, you can do DIY on these if you want. I have a download on how to print these. I've talked, I have a whole video just on this, but the main thing, the main point is when you have a system, you, if you need to go through and sort through old photographs, this helps you touch your photos once and you put it in there, you write on here, and then I can just easily flip right through all these different titles that I put on here to see exactly. I'm not sure I understand. Well, so I can see exactly what those folders, what photos those folders are holding, right? So those um, photo folders plus the power sort box. That's you know because we're talking on a scrapbooker, you guys. I I need to know how to organize my photos. I use the same thing if I'm working on newly printed photos, on digital photos. So I'll just grab a little folder and those can go into um, for the pages that I'm currently working on as well. Yes, Sharon's here and she's watching alive. Welcome. <laughs> All right. Um, so slot into the pages to see my titles. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It's thank you. Okay. Gotcha. So the question was, um, in my titles, let's see, in the laser titles, this was what Linda was asking about earlier. Yeah, these are just um, cardstock or some people use copy paper if you want to keep it um, a little uh, lighter. I used cardstock, a lighter weight cardstock. Um, and then, yeah, you just slip them in so that you have actually the front and the back that you can use for a pocket. 
Okay. Woo, good. We got that one. Wasn't sure. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, uh, photo organization. Yes. Okay. We're going to kind of get into a multi part um, organiza organization next, which is number seven. So, this is stamp and die organization. And um, so I love crafting, you know, you give me something I can create. I love it. Um, and I have had a newfound passion for stamps and dies. And I had to find a system. One of the things I realized was when new things come into my room, that's when things can get chaotic, right? It's like, oh, I just ordered these. My box came. Now what do I do with it? I have to have a place and a system to put those new things away. So here's a prime example. Like I just kind of went a little crazy and um, L Studio is one of my favorite places to find stamps and dies. So I just got these dies from L Studio and they're still in the package, but I do know where they're going to go. <clears throat> and so let's talk for a minute about stamp and die organization, but it's more than stamp and die organization because it's also stamp. Well, it's stamp and die organization, but it has different components. We use the products in a little different way. Okay, so <laughs> let me let me just jump in and it'll make sense. This is the bin that I love. So many people have asked, Lauren, where is that bin from? These are a little taller. Some folks like using the bins from, you know, uh, like the refrigerator bins, like this kind. That works well, too. You know, this is the uh, iDesign cabinet bin. And I'm going to talk about this one in just a second. But this bin is the one that I use for my stamps and dies. And you can find it at Target in the bath department. And I linked it. <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, you could just uh, find it at your local Target or hopefully if you know, you can order it online. So I love these bins because they are the perfect size, as you can see, and they are tall. They're tall. So it really kind of keeps things um, secure. So let's talk about the different components of what goes in this bin. Let me see if I can pull this down just a little bit so you can see it better. Okay, so in the bin, in order to keep things organized, you need a few different components. So this one you can see, this is one of my die bins. And I have this spring, summer, fall, winter, Christmas. And I have several of these bins. And, and this is how I keep those organized is, um, you know, by category. And then on the actual envelope, I also label with my label maker so I can easily flip through these and see what's, um, what's in my bin. Easter words, floral texture. I mean, you know, you got it. You get it. You get the idea. Flowers. <laughs> okay. So, um, what are those sleeves? And we've talked about these before. These are some of my favorite. There are a lot of choices when it comes to dye organization and the sleeves that you use. And the first sleeves I used were a lower quality, kind of a thinner plastic um, that I slipped everything in, my stamps and dies. And then I found these vinyl ones and I fell in love, fell in love with the vinyl. Um, so these are called, um, oh, let's see, job ticket holders or something. I said, or um, maybe they're, furniture, furniture <laughs> tag sleeves. I have them linked guys. Um, and so I use these for dies and I keep the top on there. So there's like a little hole where you would actually, you know, put something through and attach it to a piece of furniture. So for dies, I keep this on, but for stamps, I cut it off just because I love being, and then I put a little thumb notch. We've talked about that. 
just because I love being able to um, use these. So that's what it looks like. See that for the stamps? Same sleeve. I just cut it off and then put the thumb notch in it. And then these are my stamps. And we've had an, another um, sourcing issue with finding these dry erase sheets. I love these dry erase sheets. And apostrophe uh, games is, the, I have them linked, but to get different sizes right now, they're only showing three by five, which would be teeny tiny, you guys. You don't want to buy those. But uh, um, you can maybe uh, link, ask the um, supplier apostrophe games if they have other sites. I think, I think they have a website too. So, um, I think what happened is I started, you know, raving about these and they've sold out. Maybe they have to go make more. <laughs> I don't know. So I love these for stamps. Um, just their dry erase. And I've, I've got a whole video on this one as well, how to do that. So within stamp and die storage, the components are, let me see, whoops, getting this stamp set back in here. Okay, within the stamp. So, and then I have the same bins. These, so since I'm using the same vinyl sleeve, they also fit for my stamps. <clears throat> you can see in that cart back there, I also have more stamps. <clears throat> I will talk a little bit about that. So in my stamps, so here's the, the the actual vinyl sleeves, and you can see they're really nice, super nice quality stamps. You need the dry erase boards, and then you cut off the top, and a thumb notch, and I have the little thumb notch punch. I, I didn't link that. It is on my favorites page, but I love the little thumb notch punch. And then um, for the dies, I just leave those and then you also need the magnet sheets. And so I have my favorite magnet sheets listed for the dies. And then I just keep those there and slide those in the sleeves. Put them in my target bin that's in the bathroom section. Now, what about these little white things? That's the last piece. So it's kind of, you know, a multi-piece process for this. And these are the comic book dividers. I love these. And Joan says she just ordered the magnetic sheets today. I know. I love these magnetic sheets. They're thin. You don't need a thick sheet, but they're strong. They'll hold your dies. This one I've tried, I don't know, five different brands. This is my favorite. The one I linked today, the Marietta Magnetics. Again, everything in one place <laughs> just for you guys. So these are the comic book dividers. I use these for, oh, so many things. <laughs> Um, because they come bigger and I can cut them down to fit exactly where I want. So I can cut them to fit the bin. So it's just, you know, you have to, you modify, you modify. But they have this tab, which I love. And then you can put your label right here. So the comic book dividers, they're just like thin white plastic. Um, and they're, they're, they're thin enough that you can cut them, which is what I love. So I use them here, but look at where else I use them. I'm going to talk about this bin in just a second. These are the same comic book dividers right here. These are the same ones. I just cut them at a different height and width so that they fit in this box, right? So this is, this is what I cut for my um, ephemera, <laughs> my uh, embellishment bins, and I'll, I'll get to those. And this is what I cut for my stamp and dies. And then I even have another size I cut for my large stamps, which are back there. So the, um, uh, what are they called? Comic book dividers. Comic book dividers. I love these for dividing up and labeling because we need a good system for that. Right? We need a good system. Okay. So that is stamp and die organization um, that I love. I, I, I feel like I've tried a lot of different things and I still love this. <laughs> ah, there's Anna Marie. Anna Marie, this is for you. <laughs> My top 10 all in one place. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Such a big help. So um, yeah. Oh, good. 
Joe says, yeah, all right. I'm so happy, Joe. That makes me so happy that they've been such a big help. Taken many of the ideas and put them to use, especially bins, envelopes, Papa, Mama, Baby. We're getting to those too. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. And um, Helen's here uh, behind 15 minutes. Okay. Welcome. Welcome, Helen. I'm so glad you're here. Cindy's here. Yay, Cindy. What type of die cutting do machine? I'm thinking machine. Um, yes, I love the Sizzix switch. That's my favorite now. I probably, um, you guys, you, you probably just don't even want to know how many machines I have. It's, it's kind of ser silly. Like you can see way up there. I have one of my very first ones, the little Sizzix crank. And then I have like small ones. I have the Sizzix platform that you have to crank. Then I got the Empress. I loved that one. Then I got the Gemini and I, it, I love that one. But guess what? The Sizzix switch, it's bigger, but it accommodates everything. So like if you have all different kinds of dyes and different, you know, things, long, short, skinny, fat, whatever. I love the Sizzix switch. It's the electronic um, on sale, it runs about 270. I want to say um, sometimes they're bundled. Look at Joann's, look at Michael's, look at Amazon, you know, just search for your best price. Those are my favorite, the Sizzix switch. Okay, and then you get to use them with all your favorite <laughs> dies and make your own favorite layering shapes, right? As you know, I love that. Um, so, and these I haven't even tried yet. Like I said, I just got those, but I know what I do is just, I have a system, right? So I can take these out. <clears throat> if you, if you've seen dies, so dies usually come, sometimes they're attached and you can just break them. I have little nippers over on my die cutting station and you can see, so then they just stick right on there. I put them in the vinyl sleeve, right? And sometimes what I do also is um, if I if I get them from a specific manufacturer, this one, it says on here what it is, L Studio Long Metal Dies. So sometimes I'll just take, this one still has the goop on it. Let me get that off. Take this and um, cut it down cut it down and then just put it in the back so that I know like where that die came from. Okay. So you see, I'm already organized. I already have my new thing. It's in the th in the place. I just wouldn't need to add a label and away we go. Okay. So those are all the pieces, the sheets, the sleeves, the mat, um, the, the dry erase for stamps, the comic book dividers, all the things. Okay, so those are stamp and die organization. That's number seven. Let's talk about those embellishments, ephemera. Um, let's see, what else can we put? I'd like all the little things, embellishment and etc. organization. Okay, like all the little things. What do we do with all? the little things. This is my new favorite. So <laughs> yeah, and it has changed. And Sue, Sue F, you will say, yeah, Lauren, you changed again, didn't you? I did. This is my new favorite. Why is it my favorite? Because I love vertical organization. And I have decided how very, very much I love little pouches. <laughs> I just love little pouches. Why do I love little pouches? Because when I'm creating, I can grab that little pouch right out of my bin. Let me show you my bin again right here. I can grab my little pouch right out of my bin and take it to where I'm, you know, put it on my workspace. I can dig in here. This was another thing that I realized I was doing that I love. So if I have my embellishments, say, and I want to get in here. I want to take the whole thing and I want to put them all out like this, right? Can you guys see that? Okay, there. I want to put them all right out 
on my workspace and I can see, oh gosh, look at, I have this cute little one and I have, oh, there's a neat white one, a green one. So I have all the sizes right in front. And then when I'm done, so I can kind of match things up, look at what I, you know, what I have, what I want to use on my page. And then when I'm done, whoops, I just kind of grab them all right like this and slide them right back in the sleeve just like that boom okay and you know I kind of we, we have to you know tame the bulge so kind of move them around a little bit so they're not all bulgy in one place and then it's right back in the sleeve and these are my favorite five by seven sleeves I have these linked and you can see what I did here is I took five by seven paper. So these are, that's what the sleeve looks like when you buy it. And then, and did I say I love five by seven boxes? Five by seven cardstock also. And I always just take a piece of that white cardstock and slip it in so that it makes it easier to see what's in front. And then if I want to keep, you know, the packaging, I can slip that in the back. Or sometimes in certain cases, I will have different things in the front and the back. So let me grab. Let me grab. So here's this one. So I have the embellishments in the front. And then in the back, I have the little enamels. And you can see I also included the packaging, which is Blend and Bloom. And it all just fits and stays so nice in these packs. Now, someday I'm going to have the time where I can sit and actually label, label all my folders so that they're going to be easy to just, you know, kind of flip through and see what I have in each of these folders. So this is my I favorite. Did you try? Siri's just not listening. Um, <laughs> this is my favorite for ephemera. So how do you then organize that embellishments, um, flowers? Let's see, what else do I have in here? Enamels and little, you know, dotty type things. Love those. Um, what else? So sometimes I'll even put uh, words, words can go in here. Let's see what else. I have more flowers. Uh, oh, like I even now, my layering shapes, I have one that's just for doilies because I love doilies. I have one, I haven't labeled them yet. This is just banners, doilies, banners. Um, and you know, just, I, I, just whatever, however you want to sort these out. Oh, tabs, right? Like this is just white tabs. Now you'll see, I was just pulling out all kinds of things that are white because I'm in my white section in my bin. So if you notice what I did on those comic book dividers, so I cut them to fit. I wanted them to be that this lower part was the same height as those five by seven sleeves, but then I had the little tab. And then I was like, oh gosh, how am I gonna, you know, I want these to kind of be color coordinated, um, you know, so I can kind of glance and go, oh, what color do I need? Because color is still a big organizational thing. And so I just stuck these little um, notebook sleeves. They're on my Amazon page. I didn't link those, sorry. And then I put little pieces of cardstock. So if I look at this, I know these are neutrals. If I look at that one, I know those are black. This is white. And it looks so much prettier. I forgot to bring out my other bin. And this, these live on my cart, my stamp cart. Isn't that pretty with the colors? So now, oh, I'm knocking over everything. Hold on. Okay. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> my notebook fell down. I forgot to put that back. Okay, so on my, here's my color ones, right? So I have all these, those little um, tabs stuck on. You can see it better with the purple. Behind the purple are my purple things. All things purple. Isn't that fun? So I can just dig in here. Here's my blue, blue, 
and you can pick whatever blue you want, you know, to go in the tab. Just, it's just a reminder, a color reminder. So you can kind of see all things blue go in here. And my rule of thumb is if my pouch is too bulgy, there's too many things in here, then I can subcategorize that, right? So I don't want these to be too fat. You know, I want it to be easy that I can grab, pull in there, grab. And like, again, you can use the front and the back if you have different things that you want to separate. Um, so you noticed, you know, Creative Memories just came out with these embellishment collections. And I was like, hey, I know exactly where I'm going to put those because um, I have a system. I have a system. So these little five by seven pockets. So this was the new Lots of Love uh, embellishment. If you missed these, I have them in my shop, my Scrap Some Joy shop. And you can see I put the um, packaging in the back so I can kind of know what was supposed to be in that kit. And you can see lots of love right here and then all the good things. So again, I open it, dump it out so I can see all the things, pick through them, move them around on my page, see what I want. Then I scoop them back up, stick them back in and in they go. So where would this go? This might be its own new category because I have the lots of love and I have the carnival fun and I have that, um, the boho mandala, right? I think that's what this one was called. So these might just have their own little tab divider and maybe this would be, you know, embellishments or multi, or they could go in multicolor, whatever. You could you can figure that out, like where, where these will go. Kind of in the same place where I had these. So now I've got, I'm starting to get a collection of, you know, just general multicolor categories of embellishments and different things. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Hope that makes sense. Um, here's another one. Same, same would be in that same collection. Um, this was from one of the secret boxes, but I thought, oh, I love those. And I could use those in so many more places if I have them in my little bins. So this bin is different. This is the, let me see, it's called iDesign Cabinet Bin. I got mine at Home Goods. You can also find them on Amazon as well. So iDesign Cabinet Bin. And um, this is the eight by 10 by five. 8 by 10 by 5. Okay, and they work perfectly for the 5 by 7 pockets. And then, like I said, you just cut the um, comic book dividers down. And then you could label this however you want. If you don't want to do colors, do, you know, use words. Use your label maker and, and use words. Whatever makes sense for you. Okay, so that's it. The pockets. And I buy these, I, I think I've got them linked for uh, thir either a 35 or 50 pack. You'll definitely use them. Love these. <laughs> you did, Sue. I know. I, I changed, I changed, but I do love this. I do love this instead of the, the drawers with the bins. It's so easy because then I just grab that one thing that I need. If I need banners, I can just grab my white banners and it's in this little pocket and it's ready to go. So yes, bins, bins is, bins are kind of like another category in and of themselves to have the right bin for the right thing. Uh, like I said, this one, I love this size. This also fits on the Michael's cart, which I love to have a bin that also works with a cart. So that all works. So there's the sleeves, then get, get a box, put five by seven white cardstock in it, and you're ready to go. Anytime you need to organize embellishments, you grab one of these, you grab a, a card, and you've got a place to put it. And then if you need to create a new category, you can just cut one of those comic book dividers down. Okay, so love this new system so much. In fact, some, some of the collections, what I'm finding is that 
I'm actually reaching more for putting, putting, you know, I've kind of used different things to put embellishments away within a collection. And I'm actually kind of reaching more for these guys than all the little pockets because like I said, I can take it, dump it out, look at all the things, scoop it up, put it back in and it's done. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of a thing um, for that. Okay. And let's see, do we have questions? Ah! Shelly says, do I no longer keep your embellishments with matching? Oh yeah. So I was just talking about, I do, I do keep them there. These were those, um, special, these, these bins and you, so you can see, I only have two of them are like more geared towards color, uh, and separate. Like if they were, if I had two and I wanted to have them two places, I would put one in here, keep one with my original collection. Or if I've used up most of the collection, then the rest of it can go here. Um, but these old guys, like I didn't want to keep them in the, the Power Project sleeves or, uh, yeah, the Power Project folders because too bulky too bulky. So anything too that's too bulky, you can just take out and put back in here. Um, let me think. What else? All, in the place for all those little enamels, I had to have a place for all those good things. Um, so I hope that answered your question. I'll show you. I'm getting to Power Project folders, so I'll show you what I do there. But you, you kind of have choices. I feel like I have choices now. How I want to keep those embellishments that go with a certain collection where I want to keep those and how I want to keep them. So there's, there's options with that one. Okay. So let me put this back on my cart, slip it right in there. And I do have two carts and I'll be talking about those in a minute. Um, two. So let's see. Tabs in the envelope. So they are linked. Uh, Johnny's asking where are the tabs in the envelope. So these guys um, are linked in the description. So either um, these are from Amazon and then I keep it just, I got my white card stock. It's already pre-cut. I just ordered a, a pack of that too. And I keep that handy, always ready to go. And they're linked uh, in the description. So on Facebook above, on YouTube below, just hit the more. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, and Tammy's doing an extreme makeover. I love it. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, use your stat now. Okay. Maybe Lori's asking, um, your stash binders to hold embellishments. I don't use my sort and stash for embellishments except for lays, except for titles. So if I'm looking for a title words, if I'm looking for, um, you know, the laser titles. And again, those didn't really belong to a specific collection necessarily. So if I'm looking for laser words, sticker titles, I go to my binders, which you can see right here. And we talked about those. Those were in the beginning of the, um, live stream today. Okay. <laughs> All right. And Angela says, I'm inspired you to get more organized. Good. One group at a time. Yes. That's, that's key. Like, you know, just take it one step at a time, one area at a time. This did not happen overnight. No. And, and I, and like, I, you know, I changed my mind, right, Sue? I changed my mind. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, I want to do something different. Okay. Um, this one's an easy one. Okay, guys, let's do uh, number five. This one I love because it's so easy to do, and I feel like I'm finally really enjoying my little stash of pens. So I have that right here, and you can see I labeled it journaling kit. I put my little card in there and then just put a sticker on here. So you can put your name and put journaling kit. This is the small flex pod they sold out when, um, you know, we were first talking about this, they were gone like that. They've reordered, reordered. And now, um, we have them 
back in stock. I have used probably 20 different ways of organizing my pens. And I still do have some of my pens. I, I still do, I, like, let me categorize. I still have some of my pens in these five by seven cases by category. Like these are my jelly roll pens. I love them because I store them this way. It keeps them horizontal, which is the way you're supposed to store pens. They're in my cart. They're in the second tier of my cart. And that works. When I am scrapbooking, when I'm working on my pages, I wanted all the pens that I journal with in one place. And voila, my journaling kit was born. And what I did is took the... Um, took two of the organizers from the power project box, power sort box, and I cut them down. I have a video on this as well. And I just cut the tops down. Now I am looking for the perfect thing that we can just buy so we don't have to cut these down, but you can play around, like look around your room, look around, you know, at different, like the Dollar Tree or whatever, and see if you could, you know, bring your case with you if you don't have this and see and, and bring a pin so that you know it fits in there um, so that you can make your own. So if we take a look at the journaling case right here, I have a, a pod back here and a pod up here. And then that also gives me more little spaces for different things. So in my kit now I have all my pins, all my journaling pins, I just grabbed this. It, it also sits on the second shelf of my cart. So when I'm ready to, to journal on my scrapbook pages, I just grab this. It has a cute little handle. And then I open it up and I have so many choices of all the journaling things. I keep post-its in here as well on the side. I also keep those fun little journaling templates that we've been given over the different years. An eraser. Oh, sorry guys. Okay, I think my, my bracelet might be messing with my watch. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take that off. Um, the eraser, the sharp pencil sharpener. Um, I also do keep my pencils in here too. My photo labeling pencil is in here, a, just a, a regular pencil. And I keep my fine tips. My fine tips are kind of in here. Um, my favorite, one of the things I've, I've forgotten to mention as of late, you guys, if you're like me, I haven't mentioned this tip in so long, but here's a quick tip for you. If you're like me, okay, I love my, I go through a lot of black pens and are any pen, there, you know, if it's a dual tip, I'm always kind of going, okay, which tip do I open? Do I open this side or this side? If you just take a little piece of washi tape and I have marked, as you can see, the side that has the fine tip. I always use the fine tip for journaling. So I don't have to, you know, kind of scroll the pen and look for the little detail of which side is which. Like here, that's the fat end and this is the fine tip end. I just look for my washi tape and then I open it like that. So I haven't talked about that tip in so, so long. Um, <laughs> that's a quick and easy one just to mark your pen so that you can easily grab uh, or know which end is the fine tip for when you're journaling. Okay, the pod, the journaling kit, you zip it up. And it's finally a place big enough for all my creative memories pens that I use for my scrapbooks. Like I said, I still love all my other art pens and different things, but I keep those in these five by seven cases um, in my cart. Okay. The Velveeta cheese bottom. See, there you go. Look in your kitchen. How about that? Um, the CM binders carry will not fit in the calyx. They are too tall. Yeah, sorry. I wish. <laughs> they, they are just a smidge too tall. These are 16 by 16 cubes. That's why they fit in here from Simply Tidy from Michaels. Um, the calyx, I want to say they are 14. 
I want to say the calyx are 14 by 14 around. So yeah. Um, can the comic book sheets also be able to put stickers on? Oh, that's a good question, Joan. I don't know. I'm, I think you could. I don't know how well they would stick. They're much thicker than the sticker backing paper. Um, but I don't know. We could, we could give it a try and see. I mean, it, it, it sticks. Here's what we do know. I put my labels on here all the time. And yes, you can peel them off right? Like that. And then re-stick them, put it back down. So maybe so. Maybe that would be another, another idea. Thank you, Joan. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Jennifer. Hello. Hello. Haven't ordered the CM case yet. Been using a free makeup bag. Oh yeah. Purchase bags until yeah, those work too right? I think the biggest thing I love is just having little compartments within it so that like I have my dot tip pens in one, I have my dual tip pens, and then in between I have my fine tip pens. So whatever works for you, for sure. But I do love that. And so what I was hoping to share today was what do I reach for when I, when I sit down what systems do I have when I want to put things away, when things come into my craft room and I need to put them away so that I know where they are? But then also, like when I'm working, what do I just grab when I'm working that makes my creating easier, right? So that would be things like this. That would be things like my little five by seven cards with all the embellishments in it, you know, those kind of things. Okay. Um, do the iris cases fit in the same size bin your sort and stash? Yes, they do. <laughs> um, let's see. I don't, I used to have them right here, but they do fit. I don't know where I have uh, an iris bin right now. But they are 16 by 16. So the, the, the new Michaels bin, the new Michaels storage does fit the large iris cases where the old recollections bins did not. These do. Yep. Oh, the link to Target is not working. Maybe that's because it's my local Target. I was kind of not sure. So if you go to, tar just go to target.com and look for bath bin organizers, bath bin. Um, and I think maybe the link, uh, what was it called? Clear something, I don't remember. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. Um, I have it here. Bright Room, Bright Room, B-R-I-G-H-T-R-O-O-M, Bright Room bathroom organizers. Yay. <laughs> okay. That was a question, Gloria. Along the same lines with the comic book dividers, would the stamps stick to them since they, since the whiteboards are sold out? You know, I don't think the stamps would. Um, so we can try that, but I don't, I don't know. Cause the dry erase kind of gives that little stickiness, right? That you, that you need. Maybe Maybe, 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 maybe. I think they, they don't stick quite as well. You don't have that same um, adhere, you know, that doesn't adhere the same way, but it sure would, um, it sure would make it easier to just have to buy the one thing, right? Yeah, I know. Good question. Um, I know someone mentioned being careful of, you know, the polymer stamps, what you stick them to. I've never had any issue with the dry erase. I don't know about these plastic. I don't know. So maybe that would be something to Google search. <clears throat> Cindy, this is probably another video, but what do you use for peekaboo pockets? Yes. Like to let people know it's a pocket and have pictures behind. Tabs. I do. I use tabs all the time. In fact, that's why I have a whole um, 
I have a whole, where'd I put them? I put them away already. A whole um, file of tabs, right? Because I don't know where they went. Is this it? Yeah. Tabs. My little tabs. So these are, again, you know, I, I sell these little layering shapes in my shop because if you don't have a die cut machine, you know, you have to, you have to do all the investment. You have to buy the dies. You have to buy the machine. You have to buy the paper, blah, blah, blah. So I also sell just these fun little tabs in my shop where you can just buy layering shapes. Um, and these are, I love these. For the peekaboo pockets, I just stick them on and go, oh, hello, hello. And you can even put things on them like lift, <laughs> right? And all those fun things. Pull, you know, open here, which is another reason I love stamps, right? Because you can get stamps that say all those cute little things. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Where were we? We were, <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked. Let's get back. So we did the journaling box. Let's talk about five by seven cases to store all the things. So this is probably, we're getting up to some of my absolute, absolute favorites. Number four, five by seven cases. You've had a sneak peek already of all those things that I use them for, but so, so many things. I use them for pens and then, um, I have my labeling kit in one and I reach for this over and over and over again. It has my favorite labeling pens in here and it has my Avery Ultra tabs. I mean, do I need to say anything else? This is my labeling kit. <laughs> I love it. Um, and then let's talk about, we're going to get another little sneak peek of my cart, but do you see my cart down here? is filled, the whole top row is filled with five by seven cases because that is what I reach for all the time. So my my cart, we're gonna get to my cart in just a second. <laughs> but the, the things that are in my cart are the five by seven cases. So I'm gonna go through really quick what I have. These are the ones I have all the time in here ready to go. I have a case with dot grid paper. Okay. All my dot grid because I love dot grid. I love to journal on dot grid. So I have a whole case of dot grid. I have my white layering shapes because I love my layering shapes. And you can see, I did pull some of these out. I was getting too thick. So I pulled some out, like I pulled the tabs out and put them in here and pulled doilies out and put, you know, so forth. Okay. You saw these already. Small peekaboo pockets. So these are, remember, we just got them four by four, four by th uh, three by three by four, four by three. <laughs> um, small peekaboo pockets. So small peekaboo pockets and then <clears throat> peekaboo pockets because a page just rarely gets done without a peekaboo pocket on it. So, um, Cindy, you're asking, you know, what do you show to pull the peekaboo pockets? Now, here you go. This is also where you store your peekaboo pockets right here on my cart. Journaling cards. I have to have my journaling cards always, always at the ready. I have also, you know, so I, I do a lot of, you know, journaling writing. This is not just journaling cards, but also ruled and grid journaling cards. So um, I have a lot of like, I, I like to print uh, different like grid, like you can see grid, ruled paper, all that kind of stuff. Those have their own box. Along with white layering shapes, I have natural or neutral layering shapes in here. So I have a box of those. Tape chips. I mean, we can't, we can't do our thing without tape chips, right? Um, we all, I also have color ruled in a box. I mean, really, you got to have these foam squares, foam squares for the win. And then I also have a box of tags because sometimes I just need tags 
for what I'm working on. And then I also separated out pockets. So I have a box of pockets. Some of those you might go, oh my gosh, those are woo, a blast from the past. But if I make a little pocket, so you could do like if you made with envelope maker and made a little pocket, you could keep your pockets in here. Okay, so those are pockets. Your, yours might look totally different. Like what you reach for over and over might look totally different. But this is, these are some of my favorites that I keep right on my cart because I reach for them over and over and over and over and over. So they all just line right up on my cart. <clears throat> the order changes depending on what I pull out and how I put it back, um, but it's all right here. And then as I mentioned, underneath is where same idea as these, but this is where I keep all my pens. I have my glitter pens and I have my jelly roll pens and all these pens and they just sit again horizontally on the second shelf of my cart and um, I have that all right here. Okay, gotta get that back in there. All right, so um, another five by seven organizer box I have are for my templates. You've seen, I have a whole video on how to make these. But whenever I'm looking at, um, if I need a little help on laying out a page, I have all my um, templates that I've cut, and those are in, uh, oops, a five by seven box as well. I, I mean, what, it's, it's, it's so easy to find things to organize in these boxes. It's just, I love them. I had, I had showed you before, I keep one with what, five by seven cardstock. Oh, I also have some over there for my printer. Um, I keep my photo paper, my four by six photo paper and my five by seven photo paper in these boxes. So many things you could put in those five by seven boxes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So from Target, Bright Room Clear. Um, hi, Debbie. <laughs> okay. Um, Bright Room Clear Bathroom Bin for... Yes, for the stamps and dies, I use the Bright Room Clear Bathroom Bin, stamps and dies. But for the embellishments, I use the Home Goods. The um, yeah. So they hold. Yeah, they do. They both hold five by seven, but they hold it in a different orientation. So the Bright Room holds. Let me bring those back over here. The Bright Room Bin holds five by seven, but it holds them vertically. Okay. And then the, um, I design bin, which is what I have these in. Yeah. I could have stored them in here vertically, but I wanted something that hold, held them horizontally. So that's why I switched to a different size bin. And that's why I have them over in that cart. Um, with the with that bin okay so let me grab this one and these are yep i design cabinet bin so this is five by seven horizontal good question actually i never made that comparison before but yeah vertical vertical horizontal <laughs> i love it you guys are so smart okay um it just depends on how you want to how you want to do things, right? How you want to store. Okay. Let's see. We did. Um, we're getting into some of those, you know, tried and true. We did five by seven cases. All right, you guys, you ready? Here it is in a nutshell. <laughs> we're gonna do this, friends. We are gonna do this. We are gonna talk about about paper organization. In a nutshell, what have I learned from, you know, I, I've used the same paper organization for probably 10 years, but I have tweaked it. I started out with only Papa Bear organization, and now I have Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear organization. So 
What does that look like? Let's talk about number three, which is paper. <laughs> paper organization. Okay. Here we go. Let's start off with baby bear. Baby bear. I think these are one of my new favorites. Whenever we talk about paper organization, the one thing that I learned that we've talked about here at Tidy Up is that you want to tame the bulge. The bulgier, you know, your paper pouches get on your shelf, the harder it is to slide them in. Am I right? Like the, the fatter they are, the harder it is to get them in to those spaces and the more space they take up and you might have more bulge on the bottom and less on the top. And that was driving me nuts because I knew I had the space, but I just had to figure out how to tame those bulges. So one of the things that I um, originally talked about were record sleeve, um, record sleeve cover sleeves. I still have a lot of my collection in those, but they have now been replaced by the baby bear sleeve. This is a, a 12 by 12 plastic sleeve and it has a flap. Okay, so if you need the flap, you can. I, I never need the flap, so I just always tuck it in. They are, they are <clears throat> very economical. You can buy a huge pack of them. They are linked and they are thin. There is no gusset. Do you see that? No gusset. Do you see how thin that is? No gusset. Gusset versus no gusset. That's kind of the thinking that you have to think about with paper. So what do I use baby bear for? I use baby bear for now I'm switching these over to for my colors. And you can see my tried and true, I'm trying to get it in the <laughs> frame, tried and true Avery label. Yes, still a favorite. Avery Ultra Tabs. As I mentioned, I keep those in my labeling kit right here. Avery Ultra Tabs. I always have a stack of those ready to go. Why do I like the, the two inch ones? Because I write big. I want to see it. I don't want itty bitty little names like this. I want to see the names. So um, here's another. There's totally total, totally tonal TT tangerine, right? How can you write tangerine on an itty bitty little tab? You have to have space. Love the Avery Ultra tabs. Here's another one baked with love. So smaller collections, look at how thin that remains because there's no gusset. Do you guys see that? No gusset. So I use these for solid color cardstock now. Small collections, like this is a two piece that only has paper and stickers, totally tonals. This is another small collection it only had paper and embellishments, the Baked with Love. Same with Ladybugs. It only had paper, right? So it's in the little baby bear folder. So now I have all these collections you can see that are so thin, right? It does not take up very much space on my shelf. And that's what I love. And how many sheets of cardstock would fit? I've had at least 20 at least 20 of our thick cardstock in one baby bear. If you go over that, you might be pushing it. <laughs> okay. But, uh, I love the, the, that there's no gusset. If you have a larger collection. Okay. So baby bear with Avery ultra tabs. Let's, let's talk then when you need the gusset, this is mama bear. Mama bear has a gusset. This is from, um, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the name. Oh, hold on. I have it here. Oh, no, I don't have the name. It's, uh, oh my goodness. I'll think of it. These are the medium size. They have a gusset for when you need a little more room. 
So it's a, a, a collect like this one. I have some pre-done pages that are all from the same collection. This is Samsil. Thank you. Samsil uh, 12 by 12 paper sleeves. These cost a little bit more than the baby bear, but when you need that extra space, they have the gusset. Okay. So mama bear, when you need a little bit more room. So if you have a three piece collection or you have maybe a collection, a larger collection that you've only bought a few pieces to, you can um, use a mama bear sleeve. Again, it's going to take up a little more room. So let's look at the, you know, the whole thing is what kind of room does that take up on your shelf? Do you see how that takes up a little bit more room because of the gusset right there? So think about, you know, what you have to put away. And then I'm going to show you the other ones. And then we're going to, I'm going to come back and look at the chat for questions. Then, I mean, you could not, I could not have a room without Papa Bear. And Papa Bear is just the best. This is the Power Project folder from Creative Memories. And I had to do one modification. I've talk, talked with them about helping us out with this, but until you know that changes, my one modification is that I put a tab on the side. I have this linked. They're shelf tabs, they're, they're thick plastic. And I stick these on the side because on my cubes, I don't want to turn. I, I tried this for a while of turning my my folders and you know stuff just falls out. So I wanted this to remain upright. So I have the tab up here that it comes with, but I stick the tab on the side. Papa Bear, always gonna have these. So when you have a, a big collection, it's so awesome. You have your your uh, mat cards. I know I had a question, where do you keep your mat cards? I keep them with the collection. I want them right here. These are like, I use this pocket whenever I have little pieces, I have extra that I've, you know, done a page with. You've got plenty of room in here for um, all your papers, all the different paper packs. If you make, like sometimes if I make a border, I'll stick that in here. Or you can also put those in the two pockets on the back, right? So, so many pockets to organize has the stickers. You can put your laser borders. And some of my collections, I, I'll have to grab a different folder, but some of my collections, I also will put the fill and file sleeves. These fill and file sleeves will fit inside the Papa Bear with the holes going up. Okay, with the holes going up. And so you can store your 12, um, like your laser borders and things like that. You can store those in your fill and file sleeves and then slip those in there. You can also use the same four by four sleeves that you can find that I put in my binders. Oops, which one? That one, those binders back there. The four by four sleeves, sometimes I'll organize my embellishments with those as well. So, um, and then slide those into, I didn't, I guess I didn't grab the best example. Let me see if I can find a better example of the, let me see, the bigger. Um, ah, here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> Here's another one, Staycation. This one has the fill and file sleeves. See, I have borders in there. Oh, this one doesn't have the embellishments though. Let me see if I can find one with embellishments. Hang on folks. <laughs> okay. Here's one. This is welcome home. I put embellishments and lasers in those in the fill and file. So you can see I've kind of changed, kind of changed things around a little bit and and then also, right, like I said, I'm kind of changing things up. So here's Q the Blue, but what did I put my embellishments in for Q the Blue? Look what also fits in the Papa Bear sleeves. Do you guys recognize that? <laughs> this is 
the little five by seven pocket. And it, it fits right in the front of the Papa Bear. So that's another way that you can store your embellishments is just in these little pockets and then keep those with the collection or you could put them in the bin, right? So let me see. I know I have one other way. Oh, let me see if I can find one. I'm not finding the other, but I have used the, oh wait, here we go. Is this one? Yeah. No, nope, nope. That's not it. I have used um, the four by four pockets to separate out embellishments as well. I don't know why I didn't grab one of those. Can you see? Nope, not there either. Okay, I'll have to come back to that one. Oh, here's another Sweet Summer. So I took Sweet Summer. Sweet Summer is not a big collection, so Sweet Summer's in a mama bear. So this gives you another example of how you can use mama bear. I didn't, I didn't want all the bulkiness of a papa bear. So mama bear, sweet summer, and yes, I did put embellishments in the little pocket to slide in here. So, you know, try things that, um, again, they're gonna kind of keep your profile small, but I do also want to mention power project folders. If you need something to hold a lot, this is also where I keep my random pieces of cardstock. So all my purples go in here and then I have uh, four by six cards and journal boxes, smaller sheets, smaller scraps, but you know, I also love my um, five by seven box for my scraps. And then you can put strips in the back. So power project folders, I have one for solids and I have one for uh, pattern paper for the Papa Bear. Okay, so that, and then this is where, this is an aside, but this is where I keep my scraps and I did a whole little video on this as well. So like I could take some of these smaller purple scraps and put them in my purple bin here. And now this has moved, so it's right here close by on my shelf. You can see right there right behind me. Okay. <sighs> Adhesives like tape printer. We're going to get to that. <laughs> Almost there. Almost there. So we did paper. Um, asking, where did you get the photo guide templates? The one that were in the blue. I made them. I have a video. <laughs> I have a video on how to make them. Uh, just look at page templates. I think it's on my YouTube channel. And uh, you just get, I have the links for the, the plastic and you just get a trimmer and your label maker and chop them up. We can do it together. You just watch the video and I'll show you how to do that. Um, so yes, Sam Sill, Sam Sill are the mama bear. Yes, thank you guys. <laughs> had, a, had a block there for a minute. Sam Sill are the mama bear. So as you can see, like Sweet Summer, this collection, I didn't feel like I needed to put it in a power project folder because it's a smaller collection, right? It just doesn't, and I need to save room on my shelves. The larger collections absolutely need to go. Like if I'm going to buy multiples or this one has three packs of paper, cue the blue, right? So it needed to go in a power project folder. So some collections, you know, if you buy more, they're going to need a bigger home. But other collections you can keep contained, tame that bulge, and keep it flat. Now, a, a mention also, I just want to mention, is that um, Creative Memories has the Power Simple sleeves. I also do love these sleeves. What I've been finding these to be the most helpful for, so this could be another alternative to Mama Bear, but they are open on two sides. But what I love the Power Simple sleeves for is when I'm doing a page layout and I go, oh, like I pulled these kind of pre-done base pages 
and I can throw the things in. So if I'm working at a crop and I'm working on a couple pages, I've got, these are more like project folders. That's what I like using these for, like holding my project together of all the things I'm going to use for this two page spread. So Power Simple Sleeves, another option for Mama Bear because they have, they do have a little bit of a gusset on those. Okay. But they, and, and again, they're, they're open on two sides. Okay. Let me check in and we're going to talk about my top two favorites right after. Um, let's see. And what, uh, the subject of tidying up, is there a special URL you have to join to be as an advisor? Um, well, Paula, um, if you <laughs> if you want to be an advisor, you actually I would always suggest connecting with a an advisor. So if you're here in the U.S., you can uh, talk to me, or if you have someone that you work with, you can talk with them. If you're in Canada or Australia, you have to go by country to find an advisor uh, to connect with. You can go directly with home office as well. But we always encourage you to find an advisor so that we can take care of you on a team. So um, I have uh, information on that on my website at craftsomejoy.com. And there's a tab that says join. And uh, you can find all the information there. And especially if you'd like to be on my team. Okay. Thank you, Paula, for that question. Um, okay. So the, the templates. Okay. Okay. I think I just wanted to mention t -t -t tape chips. What are tape chips? Uh, tape chips. I love tape chips. I love tape chips for fixing mistakes and welding things, um, welding uh, pages together. I, I use them all the time. So if you watch a, a video of mine, you can see there are these little adhesive strips like this. And the fun thing, they're like the old photo splits. So you can take them off and like there's the adhesive on one side and then you can leave the backing on the other. So like if you want to stick two things together like this, if you wanted to stick two, two pieces together, you can just weld those together with tape chips. So love the tape chips. Yeah. If you watch me create stuff, I'll probably use them. <laughs> Okay. Thank you for those questions. All right. Um, and John, Johnny says, I need to get another cart. I know we're going to talk about that. Okay. I love carts. Do love carts. Um, okay. All right. I think I got the questions. If I didn't just pop it in the chat again, because it might be too far up for me to check right now. If I missed your question, let me know. I don't want to miss it. Number two, <laughs> all right, you guys, you see it, you see it, it's right there, it's right there. Number two on my list, because when it came out, it blew my socks off how much I love this thing. <laughs> love, love this organizer, which is from Stamp and Storage. It's the carousel organizer for border maker cartridges. And I did a video last week on um, the, actually I bought three of them and I, um, on Mother's Day sale, may have bought another one <laughs> because I love it that much. So um, I did, I bought another, a second border maker cartridge. So if you have all the border maker cartridges, you are going to need two, but they do hold over 80 border maker cartridges in, in one place. I think that having them so close by, having it right here within my reach, that I'm just going to have so much more fun using my border maker cartridges. So this is from Stampin' Storage. Very well made. Very, very well made on how, and, and they are heavy, heavy, heavy when they are loaded with our metal punches. <laughs> so you do need to have them someplace sturdy. Um, this is the one for punches. Again, same kind of thing. You've got border punches and standalone punches. In this carousel, just I mentioned this before, there's only two columns that will hold the border make 
the border punches. These punches, only two of them hold those. So you can't use the whole spinner for border punches, but you could use the whole spinner for standalones. Like you don't have to put border punches in them, but you can uh, in two of the columns. And then the other three columns have to be the standalone. So I do love the other carousels, but my favorite, you guys, if you had to pick one, this, this guy right here, love it. I love it. I just love it. So, um, and Diane said, awesome. It's going to be a birthday present. I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Rewatch. Kelly's going to rewatch the tidy ups. I know. So there are a lot, there's a lot, but right now I did want to make this one video where you can have, these are my top 10. Okay. Let's talk about number one. And Joan says hers comes tomorrow. You guys, I mean, this has rocked my world. I love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Number one, you guys, this is going to answer a lot of questions. <laughs> It has been, and it still is in the number one position. You guys have got to get a cart or a trolley, as my Aussie buddy friends will say. You need a cart because carts, having a cart, I have two, and having carts in my craft room made such a difference because I had piles and piles and containers and jars of things on my workspace. And even though I had all these, you know, different organizers on my workspace, it drove me nuts because I wanted a nice big workspace to work on. When I moved everything off of my table into my cart, woo! you know, the angels sing, right? It, <laughs> It's, um, I know I spin it for fun. Yes, I do. It's so fun over there. Love it. Um, and Connie says she loves hers too. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Quick guide to, to craft some joy. Yeah. Make notes. I know sometimes you got to just make notes. What goes where? Okay. Um, yeah, the, your wall unit is full and the tool. Okay, let me just go back to border makers. Yeah, for a second, because we've got some some of those coming in. Um, Julie says she has the border maker tool in the wall unit. Yes, it does work in there. I'm going to kind of spin this a little bit. You can see mine's empty Ooh, over there now. Um, yes, the um, tool right there. I don't know if you can see it with all my stuff in the way. The tool fits in the wall unit and um, you can also see I have the stamp and storage wall units here for my other punches. So that's why I was saying like if I had to do it all over again I probably would get two border maker spinners. Use my wall space for those big heavy ones like that because they hold, which way am I pointing? This one. They hold so much more, um, but the border maker cartridges, you can get so many in such a small space, right? That's a 16 by 16 cube or, you know, it, it actually will fit in a calyx. So it's 14 by 14. So the, the footprint of what you can get in that small space really makes a lot of sense, especially when you don't have a lot of wall space for, for the bigger holders like that. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and Linda says she has five cards <laughs> in her craft room. Okay, Linda. I I'd love to see what's on all of them. Also, uh, let me remind you, if you um, haven't joined my Progress on Projects Facebook group, you can find that here on Facebook or, or on Facebook. Pop The Pop Community, Progress on Projects. It's a Facebook group where we talk about all the things to make progress on our projects and it's open to everyone. Mary Smith, the sweet Mary Smith helps me manage that group. Um, and we had a whole like cart parade <laughs> in the group and you should see, just look like search for cart or just scroll through the feed. 
and you can see pictures of all these amazing carts and what everybody stores. So we're all a little different. We think a little different. Like, what do you put in your cart? What What's the best thing? But the idea of a cart to me is just the best when you have a whole bunch of little things and maybe you have drawers and maybe they're all there and you can do that. But I love my cart because if something ends up on my workspace, like my multi-purpose tool, I have a spot for that. It goes in my cart. My adhesives, I have a spot for that. So what I'm going to do is actually see if I can switch cameras so that you can get a little better view of my cart. And we're, we're going to hang on and hopefully this works, guys. Um and see what happens. Okay, well, that's not the right, <laughs> that's not it, but you can see, there it is, right there. There's my cart. Okay, so this guy, as you can see, um, it it's right next to me. It sits right next to me. So I'm in my rolling chair, <laughs> and this is a counter height chair, so um, I, sometimes I, you know, struggle with how tall it is, but that also just lets me have a cart that will roll under. Let's see if I can show you. That's my workspace. So the cart can just roll right under my workspace, which, again, I love. It's not standing out in my room. So remember, um, one of my very first videos, I showed how I made my island. But... One of the main things I love is that my cart will just fit right under it and I can just roll it out of the way. So let's get a little closer look at what's in what, all the things, whoops, all the things in my cart. Hopefully that'll help right there. Okay, so <laughs> um, we talked in the pop group about, you know, all the things, not only just your cart, my cart is actually only right here. <laughs> That's the top of my cart. All these are the extra bins I've added on the side. So I added these guys, these bins on the side here. I added these bins on the side here. I have a whole nether row of bins down there that I added also. And then I added some other boxes and things. And, and so the carts have are magnetic so you can add magnets right you can find all the fun little things to add to your cart look I even have my little broom on the back on a little hook I have my um, ruler and then I have also on the bottom I have another row of more organizers for more to tools so these are the taller things I like putting on the second row so that I can move that under my island but this is where I have all those little you know things that just seem to end up all over the place my multi-purpose tool collection my fine tip glue pins um, I have all my scissors my reversible tweezers are here um, let's see what else I have my new um, pickup stick is right here I love that. <laughs> Can we do it again? <laughs> I love that. Anyhow, I have my um, corner rounder. My uh, pickup square is handy. Let's see. Oh, I found this new little thing I'm going to be sharing. It's uh, little sanding discs that fit on top of the sponge daubers. So I'm always, you know, in, instead of a nail file, I was like, oh, that's so cool. Little sanding discs. So that's my fun new little tool I stuck in here to remember to use. And then um, I also keep my thumb notch punch, you know, so every little container has its place. I have my, a ring with all my cardstock on here. So your cart just should work hard for you. Um, let me come back around here. I want to explain one thing I did. This was a container that I found at Daiso. So you can just look for a container, Target, whatever, um, Dollar Tree, and then, ta-da, command strips. Wait, can you guys see that? <laughs> command strips. 
I just put command strips on here, the Velcro kind, and then on my cart and you know, voila, now I have a new container that I have all my adhesive in. I, I used to have my adhesive right here, but I found I didn't have enough space and this container fit my adhesive perfectly. I mean, you can see, right? Perfectly. And so I have all the colors, multiples, because I'm always running out while I'm doing my lives. So I have like two repo um, containers here now, two regular containers. And uh, so if you find a container that you like for a certain thing, just add those command strips and stick it on your cart. That's my suggestion. <laughs> The other thing I have over here, so my five by seven cases are here. These are other little containers. I, I know I mentioned I found these at Daiso. And they just, you need to find something that can take up all that little space, you know, and help keep you organized. So I did, like I said, I found these at Daiso. Perfect for my rolls of adhesive, my foam tape red tape, photo tape, all that good stuff. Um, I actually have another bin with more, more tape chips, um, photo tape. So these fit perfectly along the side in your cart. Okay, so make these carts work hard for you because uh, everything that I need to reach for, I try to keep right here handy. And as I mentioned, I have my... Um, my templates down here on the second row. And then I also have, um, these are those, the shelf tabs. I keep those in a little box because they don't fit in my labeling kit. These are the ones that I use to put on the side of the power project folders, but I keep those in a little kit with some white paper already cut so I can easily grab them and um, label the side of my power project folders. And then under here, you can see those little um, five by sevens. Those are all my kind of art pens and different things. Right now, my bottom shelf is empty because I had, um, I had my power sort box with all my photo folders down there. And then I ended up deciding that I, I wanted to move my um, photo folders somewhere else. So right now I moved them here so I can just grab my photo folders. So I have my photo folders, my scratch paper, and then my, peek my large peekaboo pockets and memorabilia pockets are in this drawer. So I needed those also close and handy. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to put on my third uh, row of my cart, but I use this so much. I'm not even sure what I want to put on there. Let me just bring over also the, um, I'm going to bring over my stamp cart. I'm not going to get into the details here. Um, I'm thinking maybe next week we'll go into a little more detail about my stamps cart if you would like to see it, but this is the long cart from Michaels. So let me switch this over so you can see that too. And you can see the difference in size. Okay, here we go. Ah, here we go. So let me see if I can get that a better view. How's that? Okay, I'm going to scooch out of the way so you can see it here. So this is my stamp cart. Oh, right there. There we go. Ha! Ah, there we go. <laughs> and it's organized really because um, I have this secret obsession with stamps and dies as well as scrapbooking. And so I have this cart organized. Um, these bins came from Joanne. You can find these bins or the bins that I used for the embellishments will fit. So what I love is finding a bin that fits perfectly into a cart to help hold the things. And you can see these 
Um, these, I, like I said, were from Joanne. They fit perfectly from front to back and three across the long cart from Michael's. This is that long one. I have bins on here too, where I hold my acrylic blocks, my little date stamp that I love reaching for all the time, more blocks and some cleaner over here. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll keep a stamp chamois handy if I need in my little um, container that that's just a magnetic container. Um, and then these are all my larger six by eight stamps. So these stamps will not fit in the bins from Target. So I had to have another storage option for these guys. And um, as you may know, I love my alphabets. So I keep my big six by eight alphabets. Let me see right in here. And um, by what I decided, uh, I, I've changed my mind again. For me, I have now um, mostly, these are most uh, alphabets, numbers, and uh, up here. And then my categories are over on the other side in the smaller bins. But I needed to have a quick way of finding the alphabets by um, company, I guess you would say. So if I saw like, oh, someone was saying, wait, here, this video, this camera. Someone was saying, oh, where do you get some of your stamps? This is Carrie Bradford. I love her stamps. But sometimes I would be there and something would go on sale and I would be like, oh, do I have that one? Like this is another beautiful stamp set from Carrie Bradford and, um, or like she does three different sizes. And, and then I thought, Oh, do I have the smaller size? So I wanted all of her, um, by, you know, I have to label these still by manufacturer, you might say together so that I could flip through and just, um, you know, if something goes on sale or whatever, I can quickly look and know, oh, it should be in this section, or if it's a Heidi Swap stamp or close to my heart stamp or whatever, Studio Calico, whatever. It's all in here um, by manufacturer. But then I also have some categories over here too. Okay, so hopefully that's a quick little tour. And then on the, the bottom, the middle shelf of this, is where I keep those embellishment bins that we were talking about. So you can see my embellishment bins are right here. Super handy. And I can just grab the whole bin if I need to and put that on my table. And then the bottom um, are some of my um, extra stamps that I have uh, in the DVD cases. Okay, Whew. quick, quick. I'm, I'm still working on this one. But I did want to show you just one more use for carts, since carts are at the top of my list. One of my favorite things, right? Like, what would we do without our carts? So, phew, <laughs> um, a few carts, but they are so needed. I know you really do need your carts. So, um, you have nine Simply Tidy Cubes and... I really like your wallow cubes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I do. I love my wallow cubes. So if you have nine, that's an awesome amount of space. Just figure out the best use and, you know, what you want to get in those nine cubes that you have. Um, and then also carts can help too. you know, keep a lot of stuff in one small area, especially the things that you need to grab over and over. Like I love being able to just roll my stamps over and work right here on my space when, when I'm ready to, you know, craft and I can just roll that over and sit here working at my desk and have that just so handy. And that's also why that spinner back there, um, has ink. I have to kind of rethink that a little bit, but I want to have my ink ready super handy so that I can use my, my stamp cart, have my ink and then be ready to go. Um, about the 44 minute. Oh, well look at Susan. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. Um, my favorite crafter, all the, yeah, all the organization in my cart. Yes. So I have a more detailed video on that for sure so that you can check it out. The top bins, Linda, yeah, these are from, these top bins are from Joanne, the ones on the top. The ones on the middle are the I design, but like I said, I, I've used, I think, probably three or four different bins up top. Different ones fit. The, um, the bins from uh, Target also fit on that cart. These guys will fit on the cart too. But uh, like I said, I needed something that's going to hold my six by eight stamps. So those were um, from Joanne, those bins. I did not link those. I forgot to link those. I, I know I have so many bins, <laughs> bins, bins. You got to find the right size bin to hold the right size thing, right? Okay. Um, custom cutting systems. Oh, my custom cutting. Yeah, those are in a drawer. Those, I do keep those in a drawer, my custom cutting. I can show you really quick because it's so easy. It's right here. Hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> I got to move my carts out of the way. But, you know, my, my wallow cubes, right, has drawers. So my custom cutting is right there. Super handy. I, I have to have that super handy as well. Yep. Love that. Love that. Um, I know a lot of people use peg walls for their custom cutting system, which I think is also genius for um, storing, storing all those little shapes. I keep mine in that drawer. Okay. Did I get everyone's question? Where do you store embellishment bins? Yep. Those are on the second row. My embellishment bins are on the second row of the stamp cart. So you could actually get three embellishment bins on the longer cart from Michael's. Okay, this long cart right here, you can get three bins. The shorter cart, I, I would say you'd get two bins for those. <clears throat> In fact, I might have to rethink that. I might actually, now that, you know, you, you, you guys always have to think about what works for you. Those embellishment bins might actually work better on my little cart. Now that I'm thinking about it, I might put those, I might move my pens from my little cart to my stamp cart and then move those embellishments because I'm always reaching for those. This is the cart that I use the most, right? This is my scrapping cart. So I might move those embellishment bins there. Maybe that's a change I can think. And maybe that's how we wrap up today because we've been going almost two hours. Can you believe it? <laughs> I thought this was going to be fast. Um, but is think of what works best for you. Try it, right? I'm always one to say, try it, especially if it's not a huge time commitment, like just moving something from one cart to another. That's not a huge time commitment. Try it and see if it works for you. Give it a couple weeks. And is that making your crafting or scrapping easier or is it making it trickier? And if it's making it easier, then I say that's a win and try it and keep using it. And um, always challenge yourself. Like that's what I'm always thinking is how can, um, what can I do that's going to make things easier, faster, and fun for me to do my projects, to scrapbook, to create and um, and have a system for putting things away when I get new stuff, right? Okay, so let's call it a tidy up <laughs> for Tuesday. Oh, Julie has a question. Where do I store my 12 inch trimmer? I struggle to find a good spot in the cart. I know, I don't have mine on the cart. I actually have mine under my, um, my island. And um, the... The trick I found was, you know, I need things underneath, and maybe we'll cover that in another, like what's under my island, because what's under my island is almost as important as what's in my cart, that I need things super handy and super easy to reach for. And those tidy um, up cubes from Michael's, these, they have different configurations, and that's what I actually have under my... Um, countertop and that's where I have my trimmer and it'll also fit in the drawers as well but that's where I love it so okay 
Oh, thank you, Gloria. I'm so glad this was helpful. Um, and my totally tonal paper. Yep, Amy, we talked about that. That goes in my baby bear. That goes in the baby bear. You can see that's my totally total tangerine baby bear because it has a very thin profile. And then I store this by color. So tangerine will go with my orange paper, like right there. Okay, so thank you, thank you. <laughs> Have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope I got most of your questions. We'll be back. So um, if, if I didn't catch them, hopefully we can catch them next time. Or you can leave it as a comment to the video and, and hopefully I can check in and see what those are. So thank you, thank you again for joining me today. That was a long one. Wasn't expecting to go so long, but enjoy your Tuesday. Have some fun tidying up. We'll see you again very soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.